Okay, lesson 8.2, Pythagorean Theorem and its Converse. And yes, it may help you get a date. Okay, two guys checking out this girl. All right, I'm going to go over and talk to her. Yeah. Show her how good you are at math. Hi. Hello. I have this triangle, but I only know how big two sides are. Is there some kind of theorem to help me find the size of the third? Sure, the Pythagorean theorem. See, girls like it when you know your math. All right, Pythagorean theorem. Uh, basically, you guys know it. It's that most famous formula of all. Do, 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 do. Um, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Some things I want to point out. A and b have to be your legs. So there's your leg, here's your other leg. And this has got to be your hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is always across from the right um, angle marking, I guess I should say. Um, it's also the longest of your three sides. A and b can be interchanged, but c has to be your hypotenuse. I took a class once where the teacher argued that when we're teaching kids, we should not use C. We should use H instead. But your book is going to use C, so we're going to stick with C. All right. First, identify there's my right angle, so the side across from that is my hypotenuse. So this is going to be my C value. The legs will be A and B, and I just put it into the formula. A is 3, B is 3, and C I don't know, or I can put X, either way. Work it through, 9 plus 9. Now I have students who have a tendency to write 18 right there, and then you got nothing to solve. you got to solve for C. 9 and 9 is 18, so C squared equals 18. Now, what do we do? To undo a square, we square root. Most of you are at least familiar. Technically, with this little 2, it's a clue for you that you would have two answers, uh, positive square root 18 and negative square root 18. However, we never have a negative distance, so we're always going to be working with positives. In addition to that, you need to look at your instructions. My instructions do not say, but sometimes they'll say round to the nearest tenth, round to the nearest hundredth, or leave in radical form, or leave your answers in exact form, which means you cannot convert this to a decimal. So I will be leaving a lot of stuff in radical form because we will be doing it more and more throughout the rest of the semester. Okay, so square root of 18 breaks down into square root of 9, square root 2. The square root of 9 is 3, right? And square root of 2 doesn't break down, so c is equal to 3 square root 2, or I should say x in this case. Right? Example two, find the value of D. This time D is a leg. So I can have A and B, or the other way around, A here and B here, and my hypotenuse is C. So three squared plus, I'll put D squared equals the hypotenuse, oh, except I know the value of C, is six. So there's my a squared plus b squared equals c squared. 9 plus d squared equals 36. Subtract 9 from both sides. I get 27, not 25. Undo the square by finding the square root of the other side. And I don't have anything in my instructions, so I'm going to continue on and solve or reduce in radical form. Square root 27 breaks down into square root 9, square root 3. The square root of 9 is 3, so now I have 3 square root 3 for the value of D. Example 3. Okay, a story problem. We're going to have quite a few of these too. Carson City, Nevada is located at about 120 degrees longitude and 39 degrees latitude. NASA Ames is located at about 122 degrees longitude and 37 degrees latitude. Use the lines of longitude and latitude to find the degree distance to the nearest tenth of a degree if you were to travel directly from NASA Ames to Carson City. Okay, so we have 120 degrees at Carson City is 
120 degrees longitude, which is going this way. So I'm going to write down that number right there. And then 39 degrees latitude. Okay, so I have to figure out um, here in just a minute. NASA Ames is located at 122 degrees longitude and 37 degrees latitude. So what's the change between this and this? And I'm looking at my latitude numbers. What's the change between 37 and 39? Isn't that two? You can kind of tell just from the squares, if you can see those little white markings there. And I have to figure out how to get from 120 to one, does that say 122? All right, so there I wouldn't tell, oh, from the squares, that does not seem right. 37, 39, and 120 to 122. My goodness. All right. Well, we will continue with this problem. Here's your right angle. A squared is 2. B, the value of B is 2. Oh, no, my pen has run out of ink. My electronic pen. What is going on? I have to give it a minute. Oh, dear. It's not like me at this very moment. Stand by for technical difficulties. Okay, that's what I was afraid of. Now we're going to be set. Okay. 2 squared plus 2 squared is C squared. This is the distance I'm trying to find right here. It's also my hypotenuse. All right, so I've got 4 plus 4 equals C squared. 8 equals C squared. C is equal to the square root of 8. Oh, wait! <laughs> square root of 8. Oh, wait, they do say in here to the nearest tenth. So now you're allowed to take your calculator and find the square root of 8, which is 2.8. What, what am I using? Latitude? Longitude? Distance? I actually quite honestly don't know how to like label that, so we're just going to leave it 2.8. Example 4. Okay, this is the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. Basically, if your sides, a squared plus b squared, gives you c squared, then you have a right triangle. All right, now let's use that. So is it a right triangle? You will have questions like this on your homework. Your side lengths are 5, 12, and 13. 13 is your longest side, so that has to be your hypotenuse. So we're going to check. 5 squared plus 12 squared. Does that equal 13 squared? Well, let's find out. 5 squared is 25. 12 squared is 144. 13 squared is 169. Let's see, 25 and 144. All right, so we have triangle happiness right here. So is it a right triangle? On this one I have to say yes because of the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. Alright, side lengths are 20, 30, and 80. Oh, not 80, 38, silly. 20 squared plus 30 squared does that equal 38 squared? 20 squared is 400. 30 squared is 900. And let's see. 38 squared is 1,444. So does 1,300 equal 1,444? No. So is this triangle with side lengths 20, 30, and 38, is that a right triangle? No. Because the Pythagorean theorem um, does not apply, or we do not get our a squared plus b squared equals c squared, so we don't have a right triangle. Okay, Pythagorean theorem, uh, Pythagorean triples. Now this is something you might be familiar with Pythagorean theorem, but probably not familiar with uh, Pythagorean triples. And there are any set of whole numbers or set of three uh, whole numbers that satisfy a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now you might think you may never need these, but if you kind of start to catch on to these, they become very, very useful as you're working through the future chapters that we're going to be dealing with because it just it saves you a lot of time, it saves you a lot of work. And I'm not expecting everybody to memorize them. Just be aware that they're out there and every once in a while you're say, oh my gosh, or I'll come around and help you and you'll be like doing this whole Pythagorean theorem solved and I'll be like, hey, isn't that a Pythagorean triple? 
All right, so here's some common ones. And I would expect you to write them down because they are going to come in useful. 3, 4, 5. In other words, 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared. You're going to see it a lot. Um, that's a very, very common one. If you memorize nothing else out of all these Pythagorean triples, that would be a good one to, to know. 5, 12, and 13. These are kind of the order that I see them happen most commonly in my classroom, too. Um, 7, 24, and 25. 8, 15, and 17. Okay, this one happens pretty, oh my goodness, pretty regular. This one, I don't see this one as much, but it's there. Now, here's the cool thing about this. 3, 4, 5, if you double it, is 6, 8, 10. Also, a Pythagorean triple. If you triple this, you'll have 9, 12, 15, also a Pythagorean triple. And these are pretty common in our classroom, too. Same with here. You can double them. 10, 24, 26. Da, 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 da. Pythagorean triple. This is, an, this is going to be a um, right triangle. You can triple this. You get 15. Uh, 12 times 3 is 36. 13 times 3 is 39. Okay, you get the idea. I would say in order, know that one, this one, and then maybe actually come over here and learn these. Okay? And then maybe go to this one. All right. Just, just one of those cool things that works a lot in math. Example 6. Determine whether 9, 12, and 15 are the sides of a right triangle. Then state whether they form a Pythagorean triple. Okay, so there's two questions here. You have to answer two things. I have kids that just try to do one thing instead of two. First of all, is it a right triangle? It can be a right triangle and not be a Pythagorean triple. 9 squared plus 12 squared equals 15 squared. That's what we're going to check out to see. 81 plus 144, does that equal 225? 144 plus 81, 225, cool. Since that works, then this is a right triangle. Yay! Uh-oh, there's that moment happening again when my board locks up. Don't lock up. Okay, then state, state whether they form a Pythagorean triple. They have to be three whole numbers, right? Are, is 9, 12, and 15 whole numbers? Why, yes, it is. So it's also a Pythagorean triple. can't believe this happened two times in one little lesson. All right, let's keep moving here if I can. I'm starting to get a little concerned. Here it comes. There it is. All right, and then I'm also going to say it's also a Pythagorean triple. Yes. Next problem. 6, 8, and 10. See if you know your Pythagorean triples. Um, 6 squared plus 8 squared, does that equal 10 squared? 36 plus 64, does that equal 100? Why, yes, it does. So this is a right triangle. And it is also a Pythagorean triple. Okay, because my three numbers are whole numbers. So there are numbers that you could put in, like I'm just going to make up some, I don't know if it works, like 4.6, 2.9 equals something with a decimal. And if you were to put those in, it may be a right triangle. However, it may not be a Pythagorean triple because they're not whole numbers. Okay, and that ends our lesson.